opportunities will be created. Some will be won, some will be lost, some will be abandoned. But just keep in mind that while the opportunity may be lost, it doesn't necessarily mean that the contact is bad. So don't think for a second just because somebody decides not to go ahead with you that down the track they might not. Because typically what happens is there is a level of ignorance within your customers have through no fault of their own, mind you. They just generally don't understand concepts that relate to the way you deliver your product. So the point is the larger the ticket, the larger the sales cycle. So don't let that cast a negative vision on the contact when they come into your business. This is your opportunity from there on to showcase your expertise, educate, nurture, and just generally be useful so that they move themselves and qualify themselves further and further and further along your sales pipeline. Uh, today, I am going to be talking to you about a specific process that we have both been using and deploying for our clients over at Trading Web Guys uh, in relation to sales. Now, before I jump too far into this, I want to give you a bit of an insight as to why I'm communicating this to you guys through the podcast. First of all, if you're watching this, you're going to have something to follow along with today. So I'm going to take you through like a bit of a visual re representation of what I'm talking about. Second of all, if you are driving and you're listening to this audio, most of our consumption is through audio. So don't freak out. This will be available as a video. Head across to the SciShed.com where you can find this episode. The video will live on there so you can watch it. And if you've got any questions about any of this stuff, or if you think, oh, this looks cool and I want to actually get involved, head across to tradywebguys.com.au and fill in one of the forms and speak to, and, and you can speak to one of the agents there about what you've seen. And just mention this podcast, mention the Sales Cadence podcast, a bit of an understanding as to what it is that you're inquiring about. Now, I want to just preface this by understand, by helping you guys understand that first and foremost, this process has been an ongoing evolution in relation to continually getting better results from ad spend. And by that, what I mean is, for you guys are, that are out there and you're spending money on ads, one of the biggest problems that we see with clients is it's not so much the ads, like the ads typically do their job, but then what falls over the next step is always in the sales process. And so what I'm going to take you through today is um, our sales cadence. It is one that we use internally and it's one that we train our clients on using. And this has formidable conversions. Like it's, it's incredible. If you actually follow this process, you can 10x your conversions like pretty much with the snap of a finger. So it's very insightful. It does lend itself largely to project-based trade businesses. So specifically, we work a lot with, you know, solar companies, roofing companies, bathroom renovators, kitchen renovators, and that kind of thing. But it's not to say that it wouldn't work for jobs. We just don't really play in that vertical much at the moment. So again, take what I'm teaching you here or showing you here anyway and use it as a bit of insight as to how you might want to apply this to your own specific business. But I cannot stress to you how powerful this is if it's done right. It is the biggest needle mover if you get this down in your in your trade business. So what I want to go through, and by the way, again, this is a 30,000 foot overview. We have insanely deep dive training into every single level of this what you're going to what you're going to hear or see today uh, within our training portal, which you get access to as if you're one of our clients. Um, it is incredibly detailed. It goes through every single step and there's full video training and everything involved on that. And the reason we do that, of course, is to improve the conversions at the end result. And the reason that we put this together is because all too often you we find ourselves in scenarios where you know people come to you for leads, we generate the leads, and then they don't service the leads correctly. And so immediately the default is the leads are no good, but it's very rarely the case. It's almost entirely comes down to how those leads have been serviced and taking them through that cadence. And you know, we've got um, incredible results the, 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 to, uh, to prove it, including you know, one of our most recent clients, the roofing company, through deploying this process. Well, actually, sorry, I should clarify. Um, what you're going to see is actually a lot of work. And I understand that it is quite a resource heavy request in order to make to get these things done the way that we are showing you. However, if you want the outcome, you've got to do the thing, right? And this is, it does take a lot of work, but it's worthwhile. Now, to the point now where we will actually 
place in our client's business and we do, we actually place sales agents in there to do this for them. So essentially we're putting an agent in their business specifically on sales to take all of their leads through this process on their behalf. We call it our sales executive program. And you can only get access to it if you're one of our clients, but it is a very powerful pro program. Essentially, it means you don't have to uh, go and hire somebody. It means you can stick to your wheelhouse, whatever you're good at, which is typically not servicing leads because at that point, they're not yet qualified. But this is about taking a lead and qualifying to the point where they are a sales qualified lead and that your time is not best spent doing that. And so one of the first things that we do within our programs is we try and get business owners out of doing that because we know that they're the bottleneck and they've got so many things on their plate. Normally what happens is this process gets relegated in the list of important things to do. And as a result, they don't get the results. Yeah, it is important that I just clarify that first of all, so you guys have a bit of context. But uh, like I was saying, the proof in the pudding of this is we've, you know, we had a client for quite a while or not so long, like, you know, maybe four, four or five months. It's been through our program. It's getting a lot of good, great leads, whatever, not servicing them. We put our sales executive into this program within the first 25 days of having the sales executive in the program with no change to the marketing or the leads, anything like that. Client had $800,000 worth of pipeline project value sitting in his sales pipeline, like just insane results. And we're seeing it happen over and over again now, perhaps not to that caliber, but like just like over and over again with these clients coming in, we're servicing the leads for them and their pipelines are all of a sudden just getting absolutely full with site visit bookings, right? So stay tuned. It's really cool. And make sure that I suppose before we get started, if you do have constraint or more importantly, if you are in a business and you're wanting to scale it predictably, this is going to be re very relevant to you. If you're in a, in a business that's not, it's sort of pretty heavily dependent on things like word of mouth or referrals, this is a very relevant conversation to you the minute you start, you decide that you want to scale. And by scale, I mean, take control of your inbound leads. And to do that, you have to run paid advertising and things like that, marketing essentially. So once you get to that stage, this will become very relevant. But regardless, I'm going to take you through this process today so you get a, a good understanding of it. The process at most times when people, businesses come to us, their sales process is next to non-existent, but it normally involves one point of contact when a lead comes in. So a lead comes in, they might get emailed or whatever, they reach out to them, they don't answer, and then it's done basically. And that's really, really common. In fact, statistically, that's pretty much what happens all the time. Most leads get serviced 50%, like either most leads either get serviced once or they don't get serviced at all. <laughs> it's crazy. And so when you move into that paid traffic dynamic, it's extremely important that you're maximizing every single opportunity to take that new prospect, take them through your process to the point where they actually become a customer or they leave. And either or it's a win. So this is about qualification and largely disqualification, right? Now, if that sounds familiar to you, if you know you have a hole in your sales process in the space of servicing leads and following up with those people, then you're going to get a lot out of this, I can guarantee it. I will say as well, what you're going to see here, although this is kind of or what I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys that are watching is really just a like a mind map drawing, but this is actually replicated within the hub, which is our lead management system. Any new client comes on board, we build this out, we deploy this for them within their lead management system so that every single lead has to follow this cadence. And it's extremely powerful. Probably one of the most valuable things that you know we see is all of a sudden being able to deploy a really defined, proven sales and marketing system, which has just a phenomenal effect on the outcome. And now when I say outcome, I'm talking about those leads that are coming into the business, moving them through that stage, those different stages of the sales process to the point where, like I mentioned before, they either become a client or they don't. Okay, so um, let me jump on in here. I'm just going to share uh, a screen with you guys that are watching, but for you guys that aren't watching, again, don't worry, I'm going to explain it really well. So you don't really have to watch this. You should be fine with the audio, but if you want to watch it, again, the siteshed.com, find the, um, if you'll find this podcast, it'll be sales cadence, just search it in the search bar and the video will be in there. Now, when leads come in to your business, it's extremely important that they are being pulled into a system which enables you to manage communications from a centralized location. What you do not want to happen, right? And we see this often and if it's you, it's fine. It's, it's really common, but what you don't 
want to happen is leads that come into the business through say like a, a web form they come in as an email or whatever and then you've got multiple people within the organization that can contact that individual through whatever means is available to them and it's normally through their own personal phone or something along those lines that's a nightmare when you're trying to manage communications because if it's not in a centralized location essentially nobody else knows what's been said to that that person at any point in time so it's extremely important that you have a centralized location for communications because that means that everybody within your team automatically can go to that contact record and they can see as plain as day all of the attempts and all the communications that have happened with, the, with that individual over the course of their entire history with your business. So a couple of things that um, can happen. When they come in as a lead, they will typically come in as a contact. And then from once they're a contact, you can set up things which can enter them into opportunity pipeline, which you don't have to do that. But typically we would do that with any campaigns that we're running for clients because we want to make sure that any lead that comes in has an opportunity tied to that contact record because the opportunity is what you would then move through the sales process, right? I'll say as well, while we're at this point in the conversation, although uh, leads will come into your business regularly, opportunities will be created. Some will be won, some will be lost, some will be abandoned. But just keep in mind that while the opportunity may be lost, it doesn't necessarily mean that the contact is bad. So don't think for a second just because somebody d decides not to go ahead with you that down the track they might not. Because typically what happens is there is a level of ignorance within your customers have through no fault of their own, mind you. They just generally don't understand concepts that relate to the way you deliver your product. For example, if you're a solar company or a bathroom remodel or whatever it is, they might not understand the fact that you guys are booked out four months in advance and you need to say and how your deposits work or they might not even understand how much it actually costs they might come in with completely false like presets on what that service is actually going to cost them so although that opportunity might not be right for them there and then you know once they become a little bit more educated perhaps down the track they might re-engage and we do see that all the time we see it within our own business and we see it with clients as well and that guys is what a sales cycle is and that sales cycle will be typically the larger the product that you're selling or offering, the larger the sales cycle is. So if you're a new home builder, for example, your sales cycle will be anywhere from two, three plus years. Whereas if you're selling solar solutions, it might be you know from immediately up to six months kind of thing. The point is the larger the ticket, the larger the sales cycle. So don't let that cast a negative vision on the contact when they come into your business. This is your opportunity from there on to showcase your expertise, educate, nurture, and just generally be useful so that they move themselves and qualify themselves further and further and further along your sales pipeline. So when they come in, they may come in um, as a contact. They might come in as an opportunity. They may even come in and have the opportunity to book a call with you. So we do that with a lot of our clients. We, we enable you know, leads to book into calendar appointments. Sometimes they'll do that, sometimes they won't. But one thing I will say, regardless, is make sure that you still qualify them. And by that, I mean, even though they filled in the form and they might've booked a call in your calendar, you still wanna make sure you've got a point of contact there just to find out if they are legitimate. And maybe the best approach that we find is to ask them questions that they've submitted in their form. And the reason you wanna do that is because um, you just wanna figure out if they're an actual human or if they're just someone funnel hacking. <clears throat> come in as a fresh lead with no contact. They come in and they filled in a form of some sort. You still want to contact them. It's just a quick phone call, whatever it might be, just to make sure they're legit. And essentially, you're just confirming their next meeting, uh, the meeting that they've booked. And if they haven't booked a meeting, then you want to try and get them into a meeting. Now, this is where it gets interesting. And, and this is where it becomes very important, right? And it's the dedication to the follow-up, which really makes the difference. And so what I'm going to show you here is how you can essentially transform a, what is in most cases... Uh, you know, a one point of contact sort of scenario, you can then change that to what we have here, which I'm going to show you, which is like closer to 45 points of contact uh, before you dismiss that opportunity. So you can imagine, first of all, two things. Yes, there's a fair bit of work involved in this. And this is why we have, as I mentioned, like a dedicated, like a system dedicated to servicing that for you. But also you can imagine the difference between someone that's been tried, you've tried to contact once between someone that you've tried to contact 45 times. You've got a much higher chance of getting hold of them, right? And some of you might be thinking, well, if you try to contact me 45 times, um, I'd be thinking you're a pest. And that's fine because essentially if they've come into your business through an ad or whatever it might be, and they've entered details for you to contact them, then contact them. And if they're going to kick up a stink about it, then fine, that's fine. Bye-bye, on your way, next, right? And move on, okay? So don't take these things personally. 
Um, this is just the uh, the dynamic of uh, when you start going down that paid traffic route. And I will also say at that point, when you do go down that paid traffic route, you can expect to, if you come out of this world of warm and fuzzy referrals and word of mouth and things like that, the second you move into cold traffic and you start generating your own leads, expect to be disappointed with the progression of those leads based on the fact that they do not know, not like, or trust you yet. They have no point of reference to what you are. And so don't be disheartened by that. And we have a lot of people that get a bit upset about it because they try and compare leads that come in through cold traffic to leads that are coming in from referral and you just can't do it, guys. It's just, it's a completely different conversation. And this is why we have this process in place, okay? So this process is really designed um, to help you with your cold traffic. So what happens is when these leads come in, they'll come into either an inbound um, lead pipeline or a self-set pipeline. And then what our goal here is, the ultimate outcome for what we do for our clients is, we are moving them towards site visit booked. And as I mentioned before, we have we work with project-based businesses. So we don't work with jobs as such, like, like you know, plumbers that do block drains and sparkies that do LED light replacements and that kind of stuff. We don't really play in that market. You know, bathroom renovation clients, when their customers come in, the goal for us is to book them into a site visit, which takes a lot of qualification, which I'm not really going to get into today. But <clears throat> the point is we need to take them from the point of being a fresh new lead right to the point where they are a sales qualified lead, which is when they're booked in to a site visit. That's a sales qualified lead at our end. That's what we look at. Like a marketing qualified lead is someone that you've triaged and they're like, yep, you're a fit. Sales qualified is you've been booked in for a site visit, right? So now in order for us to do this effectively, we're going to move them through a series of um, stages that will take around five days, give or take. Now in day one through to day five, we do a couple of things. On day one, when the lead comes in, we're going to call them. But we're not going to call them once. We're going to call them three times because, I mean, if you call me on my mobile, I'm not going to answer it. If you call me twice, I'm not going to answer it. If you call me a third time, I'd probably be looking at it going, oh man, this could be something important. Maybe it's the school, the kids are in trouble or whatever it might be, right? So I'll probably answer it. That's the day one. And then we have a day one again. And day one again is essentially later on that day, we'll try the same thing again. We'll try and call them three times. Now, the reason that we do that is because people are busy and you've got to think, if someone's seen, say, like a Facebook ad while they're on the bus driving to work or you know, driving to work, they might click on the ad, they might enter their details, and then when they get into work, the phone rings and they can't answer it. And so what we're trying to do is reach people at a time that's convenient to them. And that is a huge difference, right? Because we're not just trying to hit them over and over again. Like even called, I called them three times, they didn't answer. Okay. But if you call them back to back three times, they didn't answer, they're probably doing something. So again, this is a real dedication to the process and making sure that we are optimizing every potential opportunity we have of, engage, of, of getting hold of that lead and taking them from a lead to a marketing qualified lead. So then we repeat that process on day two. We do a day two again, day three, day three again, day four, day four again, day five, day five again. And then after day five, if we can't get hold of them and we've contacted them six times a day, then at that point, we're like, you know what? This opportunity is probably not going to happen. Uh, let's, um, let's abandon this opportunity. And then we remove it from the system. We don't, we don't remove the contact. We remove the opportunity. Okay? And again, I just want to really drive that home. The opportunity might not be right, but the contact might still be eventually. And don't disregard that, okay? So then the goal here is we want to be driving people. So if we do get hold of someone and we can book them into a call, like let's call it discovery or triage or whatever you want to call it, then we'll move them to the next stage here, which is the discovery call. And in the discovery call, essentially what we're doing is we're trying to establish whether or not they're a good fit for the business. And well, that might change based on a number of different variables, but importantly, whoever's handling those triage calls, they're asking questions which qualify and or disqualify that person or that opportunity from progressing to the next stage, which is the site visit. And some of you guys may do site visits and some of you guys, maybe you don't, but like with our sales executive program, what we're essentially doing is managing the entire pipeline and the discovery call. And then we are qualifying that lead and putting them into a site visit for, for the clients. So essentially all they have to do is show up and ideally close the deal. And we have some very complex um, and uh, really good training in our, in, our, um, in our community on how to close those site visits as well. In fact, we've had one of the guys on the podcast previously whose site visit um, 
close rate from site visit at the time of recording a podcast had gone from 15% to 100. So it's a very, it's very powerful process as well. But again, I'm not going to go into that training specifically, but I just wanted to drive home um, the, the dynamic of that process. The goal of the contacting the leads is to get them into discovery. The goal of discovery is to either A, get them into a site visit or B, disqualify them. So there's a very clear outcomes there. So then off the back of that, you would then be able to, once they, once they go to site, um, communicate the, what it is you do. Um, look, again, there's a lot of things that happen on, uh, in the discovery call, which I'm not going to go into today, um, that can the prep the, the customer or the not yet customer as to what's, what's to come looking forward. But essentially the goal is like what we're talking about here today, plain and simple is maximizing the opportunity of the, of the lead that comes in and taking that typical, you know, 0.5 to one attempt at contacting them right up to uh, what you've seen here where we're contacting them basically six times a day throughout two different time slots uh, for five days in a row in order to get them into the discovery call. And what you might be asking in the background is, well, like <clears throat> surely how many people would be actually coming in at or answering that call on day five? And, and the answer is a lot. So a lot of people will do that because they genuinely, they get busy. And, you know, the, the fact that you're showing that you're consistent and you're trying to get hold of those people, they have given you their information for a reason. So you have that obligation and responsibility to hold up your part of the conversation there. I hope that was helpful. Again, I know it looks like a lot of work and that's because it is a lot of work. And the reason that I love this process so much is because like we are yet to see like insane conversions off the back of it for, for every single person that adopts this, that it just, it just goes, it goes crazy. And the things that you do need to have dialed in really to make this work is first of all, the technology, because you really need to have those leads moving through the system. So if you want more information about that, you can head across to tradyhub.net. You also need to make sure that you've got somebody with capacity that can move them through this pipeline. They've got to be able to service this caliber of, of conversation. So again, that's why we have our sales executive program. But if you have someone internal, great, that's fine. And then of course, you need the training throughout the various stages because it's very important that when somebody's triaging these leads, they're asking the right questions and they're prepping that individual for what's to come when it does reach site visit stage. And then when the person gets to site, they also need the training on how they can you know, be, be moving those deals, uh, closing those deals and things like that. If you want any information about this, if you want to have a chat with one of our agents, head across to tradywebguys.com.au, fill in one of the forms there and uh, someone will get a hold of you. Now, if that video was useful to you and you want to hear about someone that it's worked for, this is the next video for you to watch. Go check that one out. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was useful to you. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. We do a lot of this content and we really want you to be able to learn from what we're putting out there. Until next time get noticed. New Zealand based home renovation company, 6,593% ROAS. Sydney based solar company, 2,700% ROAS. Hunter region based bathroom renovation company, 5,616% ROAS. Melbourne based building company, 13,182% return on ad spend. Adelaide based solar company, 2,881% return on ad spend. Guys, the list goes on and on. If you are a trade based business and you work with projects, like roofing, solar, bathroom renovations, kitchen renovations, anything like that, head across to tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. Book in a conversation. It is game changing.